Hello again. Welcome to the 2015 Reading Challenge Vlog 4. And it is about the book that I did not finish. Moxieland. Why didn't I finish this book? Originally, anyway, because I finished it now. Very long story short, it was on the other user account on my Mac because um, I had it as an ebook and the word on that user account went bug eye one day. I went to open a book that I was working on and every single one of my Word documents had the broken line of doom through it, all file corrupted. So after struggling to try and get the damn thing fixed and it wouldn't, I had to open another user account and I just forgot about reading Moxieland, just completely forgot about it. And once I started thinking about it again, it was about a year later, and I just couldn't be bothered to go into the other user account to read it, because at the time I didn't know how to go through one user account into another to pull files back into the new account. Um, I do now. That's actually what I did for the reading challenge until I went into a charity shop and boom, this baby was sitting there on the shelf looking at me, and I'm like, oh yeah. That is why I didn't finish reading Moxieland. Not out of any desire not to, I love Lauren Bukers. I actually, I will get into this when I finish my little tiny mini review, which is not really a review, but more of an opinion that is kind of a review because reviews are opinions. Oh my God, I'm not gonna get into that one. But I do prefer Lauren Bukers newer type books, The Shining Girls and Broken Monsters. Although I don't feel like they're entirely successful, but I'm not talking about those. So I'm not gonna talk about those. I'm gonna talk about Moxieland. Moxieland is set in a futuristic South African city. Um, it is government controlled, but everywhere is very government controlled and the city is segregated. Poor people and corporate um, workers are separate from each other. So what you have, where you work and what you have, your level of wealth very much controls where you can go and what you can do. Um, which is basically the platform from which the story springs. We get four different snapshots as it were. Although these four perspectives that we see um, appear to be something, they're not entirely that. And I don't know whether that's a part of the actual intent of the book or not, uh, but back to the story. We're following four individuals and we start off with Kendra. And Kendra becomes a sponsor baby and what that is, is sort of like a company pays her to be changed by nanobots and um, they will also alter the cells under the skin of her arm to create a glowing advertisement logo for a soft drink. And she's done this because her father died and she'd fallen out of college. And um, on the one hand, this seems like she's in dire straits, but on the other hand, you find out that she's actually a kept woman. She's got this boyfriend, Jonathan, who's quite wealthy and looks after her very well. And he's, he's in control of an awful lot. I feel like on the one hand, she's a really strong character, but then almost entirely contradictory to that. She's completely helpless and dependent and how she ends up. The point at the end of the book where she's just walking blindly into a certain situation, which I won't go into because I don't want to give anything away. Instead of thinking, should I be doing this? She just walks into it. I didn't feel like she would at that point be as trusting as she was. And then there's Toby. Toby wears this jacket that records everything that he does and then he plays it for people. That's not how he earns money because he doesn't earn any money. Toby is a little rich kid and he lives off his parents. He basically does the vlogging, as it were, for notoriety and for followers. Now he's got a friend called Tendeka. Tendeka is, he seems to be genuinely poor, <laughs> but we find out that he's not. And he is an activist and he acts against the government, against corporate control and all that stuff. He's involved with this person he's met on a virtual reality game and things are about to get serious with Tendeka. He's about to step off into the deep end of some pretty gnarly activism that steps across the line into terrorism. And uh, at the beginning of his arc where he's just hacking the billboard, this is how Toby comes in because Toby has a contact in a corporation called Lorato. Now Lorato is originally an orphan and she's got onto the corporate track so she's doing quite well for herself. What happens is they get caught up in Tendeka's 
little schemes, but Tendeka himself is just being used as a puppet. One of the problems I had with this was that Kendra and Toby, whilst Toby is involved with Tendeka to a certain point, the point at which Tendeka goes from hacking billboards to serious sort of acts of terrorism, Toby isn't on board with it. Toby gets involved with it because he he's back into gaming to try and make some money because he's been cut off from his allowance and the only way he knows how to make money is to go into games and collect items in games, like special items for people. And one of the games he goes on accidentally pulls him into a situation that Tendeka's caused with his terrorism. And Kendra's the same. Kendra's not really involved with it, but she just happens to be in the same place. This game is taking place. It's like a... It's a game played out in real life, and Toby's playing a character in this game, but he's actually on the subway. They're all actually on the subway, but they're playing their characters. And they're there when Tendeka commits this act of terrorism that he's trying to do, and um, they get caught up when the police come to stop it all. And uh, Kendra just happens to be there. She's on her way to see a friend, and she just happens to be in the subway. There's a lot of coincidence in it. I found that a bit unconvincing, the way they all get dragged into Tendeka's problems. Um, last time I remember the first two chapters, three chapters that I read when I first started reading it on the other user account, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And then I start reading it again two years later and I'm suddenly less convinced. I'm just sort of like, I'm not sure. I mean, I felt that Kendra's autonomy, in a sense, was swept out from underneath her. I didn't feel like the decision she made at the end through the character arc that she'd been through I didn't think she'd make that decision. I felt like she was pushed into it by story and that irritated me. And I felt they were all pushed into the whole situation at the end by the story rather than the characters, the only character really who does make his own story as Tendeka, but he's not even making his own story. But I suppose that may be some of the point, the fact that these kids are just being used. Um, I did like the ending. I liked it a lot. I liked how real it felt because these kids do not all have happy endings. If everyone survives I want to see that they're really struggling with something unwieldy because you've been through hell and when you come through hell you don't walk out the other side with nothing to handle, you walk out with some hella baggage that you got to work through. So I want to see that if they survive and, if, and I also want to see maybe some of them not surviving because the situation they're in is pretty hardcore so in that sense it, it filled my expectations of that kind of story not to give anything away because I won't say exactly what happened but yeah I feel like the one who got the most out of it all was Lorato and she she almost didn't that's what's interesting for me the fact that it was teetering for her apart from all of that I did like the book I did enjoy it um Lauren Bucas is an author I enjoy but when I read her books there's always something not quite clicking together for me. I love her style, I love how she writes, but there's always something missing. I always close the book feeling like I've not quite been convinced of something. Um, that's every single time, that's every single book of hers I've read, every single time I finished, I felt a, just a little bit of me is sort of like, hmm. I don't know whether it's just me not reading them right or something, but just something about me and her books do not gel at the end even though I want to love them more than I do I don't. <laughs> I like them but I don't love them and same thing with Moxieland although after my initial reading of it I thought yeah I'm gonna really love this it's totally my thing it's totally future sci-fi a bit of cyberpunk level that shit but no same thing same distance and I don't know whether that would have been true two years ago I have no idea I cannot compare because I'm not reading it two years ago I'm reading it now so <sighs> liked it, would recommend it, but felt distanced from it and not quite connected to it. Anyway, next week we are on to this book. See how I had that ready. It's just like, whew. <laughs> um, Akak Macaque by Gareth Powell. This was for a book with non-human characters. It doesn't only have the one which is great. I love that it fulfills the criteria in a couple of ways, but I will get to that next week. Thank you for watching and goodbye.